Hello class, today we're going to discuss poetry and I'm going to read and talk about two of the poems that are in your selection for this week, but understand that you need to look at and understand all of the poems for this week's readings because you will be responsible for them on the second test. Let me direct you to page 1184 in your textbook. And I'm going to read the poem, My Papa's Waltz to You, by Theodore Retke. The whiskey on your breath could make a small boy dizzy, but I hung on like death, such waltzing was not easy. We romped until the pans slid from the kitchen shelf. My mother's countenance could not unfrown itself. The hand that held my wrist was battered on one knuckle, with every step you missed, my right ear scraped a buckle. You beat time on my head with a palm caked hard by dirt, then waltzed me off to bed, still clinging to your shirt. So unfortunately, we will never know whether this poem was supposed to be seen in a positive or a negative light, because the poet was not willing to divulge that. What's interesting, I think, about it is that you can make a case for either direction. You might have heard uh, an abusive situation when I read the poem, or you might have seen it as a playful situation. And the way that happens is the words that the poet chooses to use and their denotation and connotations. The denotation is the dictionary definition of the word, and the connotation is the definition that you associate with the word. So if you look back to the first stanza, you'll notice right off the bat that there are some very negative words in that stanza that might lead you in the direction of seeing this poem as an abusive situation. There's the word whiskey, there's the word dizzy, there's the word death. And there's also the word hung. And then as you move through the poem, if you've started thinking that it's a negative situation, you might see the word beat and battered and just assume that the father in the poem is being abusive towards his son. I could argue, however, that this is just a typical situation where the father has come home from a hard day at work he works outside, his hands are dirty, his knuckles are scraped because he has, you know, works in some sort of physical labor. He comes in and the mom is cooking dinner and he starts playing with the little boy, dancing with him. The boy's feet are on the top of the father's feet and the boy is just tall enough that his ear is right at the dad's buckle level. So it is a dance, a literal dance, perhaps, if you take this direction when you're reading the poem. Now as far as denotation and connotation goes, uh, the word romp is a playful word and so if you understand that then that connotation that you associate with the word romp might take you in the direction of seeing this as a playful situation. Also what I think is interesting is this, uh, the poet says that the mother's countenance, now the definition, the denotation of the word countenance means face, but uh, Rutke says the mother's countenance could not unfrown itself. So rather than, what's the, what is an unfrown? If you think about it, it's a smile. So by putting the word frown in there, we have a negative connotation associated in this particular stanza. And that is a way of, that the poet, that the writer, takes the reader down a certain path. And that's what's really cool about any kind of writing, is that you, or the poet, or the author, or whomever, has control over your readers or their readers' thoughts. Let's look now at another poem by Gwendolyn Brooks. And this one I actually put a YouTube video of on your course site. It's not in your textbook. It's called Saw a song in the front yard, and I'll read it for you now. I've stayed in the front yard all my life. I want to peek at the back, where it's rough and untended and hungry weed grows. A girl gets sick of a rose. 
I want to go in the backyard now and maybe down the alley to where the charity children play. I want a good time today. They do some wonderful things. They have some wonderful fun. My mother sneers, but I say it's fine how they don't have to go in at a quarter to nine. My mother, she tells me that Johnny May will grow up to be a bad woman. That George will be taken to jail soon or late on account of last winter he sold our back gate. But I say it's fine. Honest, I do, and I'd like to be a bad woman, too, and wear the brave stockings of night black lace and strut down the streets with paint on my face. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on in this poem. Uh, what I think is interesting, and you would only know this if you had read you know, some literary criticism about the poem, is that this is actually written from the point of view of a young white girl. So the speaker of the poem is a young white girl. Remember that the speaker is not necessarily the poet. The poet is Gwendolyn Brooks, who is a very famous African-American poet. In writing through the point of view of a white person, she is able to say a lot of things about race relations that she couldn't say outright, especially during the time in which the poem was written. So when we look at the first stanza, the very first line of the poem is, I've stayed in the front yard all my life. Now this is an example of a literary term that we covered earlier when we were discussing Mark Twain way at the beginning of the semester, called hyperbole. And obviously she's not stayed in the front yard her whole life. And really, the front yard is a symbol for something. She's not even really talking about the yard at her house. But if you consider what the front yard stands for and what the backyard stands for, then you can get some more meaning out of this poem. So, for instance, at your own houses, how is the front yard different from the backyard? If you have time to mow either the front yard or the backyard over the weekend, which one are you going to mow first? probably the front. And why? Because that's what the people see. However, most people spend their time in their backyards. That's where the grill is, that's where the deck or the patio or the lawn chairs are, and where people hang out and have a good time and play sports. So the front yard is where you have your oh, out, your outward personality, and the backyard is where you have, you know, the real stuff that's going on in your life. So she is saying, you know, she's tired of being in the front yard. She wants to go have some fun to the backyard. And then she starts talking about how she feels about other children in her neighborhood. And as a little white girl, she wants to do what her neighbors are doing. She just wants to have fun with her friends. And she sees that as not a problem. However, her mother is not okay with that. So the poem then is is about you know these the relationships between the races and how how it's viewed, how they're viewed through the eyes of a young white girl. So the, the term that you should understand from that poem is hyperbole and symbol and how symbol connects to theme. And then, of course, you need to understand the difference between denotation and connotation in My Papa's Waltz. You have a number of other very interesting poems to read for this selection. You've got The Fish, which has tons of great imagery in it, and I want you to know the differences between the types of imagery. So understand that there's visual, auditory, there's tactile, there's gustatory imagery, which is image of taste, and there is, what's the fifth one? <laughs> um, touch, sound, taste, and smell. Okay, so that's all factory, all factory sense. There's also a poem that you're going to be responsible for called Those Winter Sundays. Some of you may have read that in your English 112 textbook. There is Traveling Through the Dark by William Stafford. There's a very short poem called The Death of the Ball Turret Gunner, and this is an extended metaphor, so you need to be able to associate the definition of metaphor with this particular poem. And then there are the two by Gwendolyn Brooks, the one that we just went over, and another one called We Real Cool. 
Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's lecture and that you are coming up with some great ideas for your research report. I look forward to taking a look at your paraphrases of poems, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.